So thinking about the types of values that you see in the packet, you want to try to re draw those or right simulate that texture then in your own drawing so thinking about the contours of the bark you might even get some gesture to show the moss that's growing on this trunk of the tree here maybe even some stippling so these would be considered contour where you're working kind of up and down like this gesture lines you know those are those kind of real squiggly lines real loose and then stippling those were those little dots that you can create. So all of those combined are going to help you create that the texture there. There's some lines that kind of work in a different contour. So let's say this piece of wood had a little bump in it and then maybe there's even like a little branch that was broken off. This might be a piece of driftwood or you know a piece of wood that was that has been laying around for a super long time. I'm just kind of drawing this natural kind of organic shape here. That would be like a log, right? So here's my log shape. Maybe I'll draw another little branch coming out this way. So there's this area that there's a curve here. Let's say there might be a little knot in that wood as well. So the contour lines kind of follow around that knot, maybe even follows the contour of this shape of the tree here. And then I can create that wood grain by following that around. Maybe there's another knot down in this area. So I start with this kind of uh, elongated oval shape that kind of comes to a point. And then I start working my way around it. Notice that I'm holding my pencil loosely like this. And as I draw in these little bark lines, I'm kind of using a, a squiggle in my line too. So it's not perfectly straight. This is a, a rough piece of wood. This isn't a piece of wood that's been milled or sanded down. This is just outside, been sitting around for a long time. Maybe there's these little cracks that work their way up too. So the value is darker. So that's what we're thinking about as far as the natural textures of a piece of wood, then what you'll do is you'll take those different values of brown. I can even use a gray in there as well. And we're just going to be using these colored pencils like we would with value. So you have a light and a dark. So the highlight, let's say, is coming in here from the right. So that means all of the shadows will be on the left side. And then think about, too, like Here's a piece of bark that's coming together, right? So as they come together and they fold inward, that shadow that happens inside the crevice is going to be the darkest part. So let's say you got two pieces of bark, they're folding kind of inward, and you can kind of see how that shadow takes place as those two pieces come together. That's what all these little lines are representing, okay? Like the little cracks inside the bark. So that's going to be a darker part. You might even use your pencil plus colored pencil to make that shadow even darker. This is just a gray colored pencil here. Then all of the areas that you see inside here might be a little lighter, but also take into consideration the light source. So the right side will be lighter. The left side will be darker. That one didn't have a sharpened point, so let me grab a different one here. I'll get you guys some sharpeners when you start practicing. So now I'm filling in that piece of wood get this out from underneath it fill it in that piece of wood maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here for you and I'm thinking again of the light source on the right I might even use that pencil the same way I was drawing as far as adding in some of those types of rough marks right so not only can we layer this colored pencil like we would layer graphite and blend but I can also use it to create marks in my drawing as well, those textural simulated marks. And then we said the right side or the left side is going to be more in the shadow here. So I go back over that with the, the darker brown to get that, that side over here a little bit darker. That's going to help to push the, the concept of three-dimensional, like this is round, right? Now I'm going over it with a gray too. So I've, I've gone over it with brown. Light brown, dark brown, and gray to make that shadow even darker. Then I can go back in there and push those lines that existed in the wood grain with my darker brown to show that those are those little cracks and crevices we were talking about. I might even draw the outer edge of this piece of bark with kind of a rough line as well. So it's not a perfectly straight line. It's got some bumps along the way. So it's kind of a rough, a roughly drawn line. That's going to help 
show that texture. Think about this little picture over here too as you see some of that. Then go in there and maybe you'll do some cross hatching to get some even more kind of rough textures going on inside that piece of wood. Maybe even some stippling like we talked about. So using some of those textural markings along with the color, you can use this color pencil very similar to what you would do with your, uh, your regular pencil, right? And get some of the same types of illusions to happen. So I'm layering. We would consider this blending with the color pencil when you're working in layers. And then just kind of going back over those. So I started in pencil, kind of drawing those lines. I'll kind of move this one over and you can see my ones from yesterday. I'm going to give you guys uh, the, some time to get some pencils here. Here's this one and then these two. But we're trying to accomplish these wooden textures now. You can see my shadows were on the opposite side over here. And then this object is going to be something you'll also use. So we've drawn the hand, the eyeball, and now this wooden uh, log texture. You're going to do that with colored pencil. So let me pause this.